Today, the auditor is following audit trails from production to product inspection undertaken in the CMM room. Watch this video and see whether the auditor audits this effectively. So, following the audit trail from the shop floor, I see for this product that you do a final inspection uh, of this. You take one part uh, every batch and you check it on the CMM. Right. Um, I'd like to know a little bit more about the CMM calibration. Yeah, absolutely. So the CMM machine itself is calibrated once a year, but every morning at the start of shift, we have our calibration ball and we run the test and it feeds over here into our computer and we go through and it flags if there's any errors with our MSA. Right, so just a couple of things. Could you show me the calibration certificate for this? Yeah, I, absolutely. We have the calibration certificate, but I don't have it with me. I have to go get it from our records. Okay, right. I'm going to make a note of I'll follow up on that. And what is the, the frequency you do the verification of the CMM? The verification is done every morning with that verification ball. Right, okay. And what action is taken then if any error is found on this daily verification? So if we find an error, we will uh, adjust over here and rerun it to see if it will pass. Right, okay. Um, and that I see then you have defined as a reaction plan. Um, has that happened recently when you've done the verification? Have you had any issues with, with measurement error? Not, not recently. Uh, maybe a couple months ago there was a minimal issue, but we were able to fix it. Right, okay. And so I also want to talk about gauge R and R for this uh, CMM. Uh, when did you last do a gauge R and R on this? So we've never done a gauge R and R on this. Why is that? Uh, because according to IATF 16949, we don't need to do a gauge R and R on everything. Right, okay. Well, the requirement does say that for each type of measuring test equipment system, specified on the control plan that we do need to do a gauge R&R. &R. I so, thought that was if applicable. No, no, we need to do a gauge R&R, &R, not on every piece of equipment, but we need to do a gauge R&R &R on every type of equipment. And if you've not done a gauge R&R &R on here, that does give a risk to the measurement process. I know you're doing your daily verifications, um, but at least annually you should be doing a gauge R&R &R study. So I'm going to be recording that uh, in my report later. So let's summarise. The auditor is doing well here in following audit trails from the shop floor into where the product inspection is done, which in this case is the CMM room. The auditor questions the calibration of the CMM, which is good, and also raises the subject of how periodic verification of the CMM is done using the master calibration ball. In this case though, the auditor made some wrong statements. They mentioned that gauge R and R is required for each type of equipment. That is clearly not the requirement stated in IETF 16949 7.1.5.1.1 measurement system analysis. This does require measurement system analysis, but the requirement does not specifically say that this has to be gauge R and R. So if the auditor followed the audit trail and found that the organization was actually keeping records of the verification activity, this could be counted as evidence of measurement system analysis for bias, linearity, and stability. So let's summarize the key learning points. Auditors should always follow audit trails to verify the effective implementation of the management system. In this case, however, the auditor was imposing requirements that are not defined in IETF 16949, namely that the organization has to do gauge R and R studies on each type of equipment. The requirement clearly states 71511 that measurement system analysis has to be undertaken on each type of equipment, but that could indeed be 
bias, linearity or stability. Or for attribute agreement, it could be attribute agreement analysis.